multiple four, we have both greatest integer and absolute value in this function. Recall that for the greatest integer function, what that's saying is that whatever's inside this bracket, let's say it's 1.2. It's asking for the greatest integer less than or equal to 1.2. In that case, this would be 1. Or if I had 4.8, it would be 4. For negative numbers, like negative 3.2, the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 3.2 is negative 4. OK. Now, since this is a bit complicated, it, it is helpful just to take it in stages. So I'm going to look first at with the greatest integer of x is. And then I'm going to look for the absolute value of what that is. If x is 0.2, the greatest integer less than or equal to 0.2 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. So this is the function that we're looking for. And the same would hold true of 0.5. Round down to 0, absolute value 0. When we hit 1, the greatest integer less than or equal to 1 is 1. OK. The, and the absolute value of that is 1. 1. 1.2. Again, we're going to go down to the greatest integer that's less than or equal to 1.2, which is 1. And the absolute value is 1. Same for 1.8 and all the way up until 2. Once we hit 2, the greatest integer less than or equal to 2 is 2, absolute value is 2. So that's working with positive numbers, greatest integer and the absolute value, it's the same. OK, so let's go to negative. Negative 0.4, the greatest integer that is less than or equal to negative 0.4. So I'm looking and I've got 0 and 1 and negative 1 and negative 0.4 is about here. So I'm going to go down to negative 1. The absolute value of that is 1. Here you can see that the greatest integer is not the same as absolute value. Or for negative 1. Greatest integer less than or equal to negative 1 is negative 1. The absolute value is 1. Negative 1.8. Greatest integer that's less than or equal to negative 1.8. I'm going to go down to negative 2 and the absolute value is 2. For negative 2, the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 2 is negative 2. The absolute value is 2. So you see that there are intervals here. Intervals of the domain end up with the same value for the function. So I'm going to have a step function. But remember that absolute value graphs are usually V-shaped. So I'm actually going to end up with a V-shaped step function. Let's plot these out. So for 0, the absolute value of 0, the greatest integer of 0 would be 0, and then the absolute value would be 0. So with 0, we're, we're going to include it. And for all values up to but not including 1, the function is going to equal 0. Once we get to 1, I have an open circle because it's not included. When x is 1, f of x is 1. So I'm going to jump up here. All the values between 1 and 2, but not including 2, will have an, have an f of x, or a y value, that is 1. As soon as I hit 2, open circle, I'm going to jump up. And this is going to, once I hit 2, f of x is 2. All the way up to, but not including 3. And it's going to go on that way. And you see now we have the step function and that it's v-shaped like absolute value. Let's look over here on the negative side of things. So for negative 0.4, so somewhere in here, it's going to equal 1. Negative 1 is also equal to 1. So here on the left side, I actually have a closed circle and an open circle on the right. It's the opposite of what I had over here. When I get to less than negative 1, my value for f of x is going to jump up to 2. So this is closed circle. I get slightly less than, but not including negative 1. It's going to jump up to 2. Negative 2, my value is also 2. 
and everything in between. And then when I get to just slightly more negative than negative 2, like negative 2.1, it's going to jump up to 3. So you can see how this is V-shaped, and it's a step function. The step function comes from it being a greatest integer function. The V-shape comes from that absolute value. And you also just had to... You know, be careful how you're doing the open and the closed circles. Okay.